Jay doesn't have any kind of pencil dick or anything, so I was like, why the fuck is this happening to me? So, who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? Hey guys, it's far too cold to be in the pool today. I put my feet in the pool, took a few pictures like I was actually living the pool life or whatever, but it's too fucking cold and it looks so beautiful. Like my eyes are actually gonna start watering and stuff because it's so bright. But um, there's my wet feet. I am outside because the maids are cleaning my my computer area. <laughs> That's literally the only reason I'm outside right now. And uh, I thought I would do a little vlog just talking to you guys. I'm not gonna be able to. Hmm, can I put it up somewhere and just talk to you guys? Or if I lay down, am I gonna get dicked by some fucking bug or something? I guess not. I can't see anything. Like, how do I do this? How, how does one live in this brightness? Also, I only have sunscreen on my face. So, this is a bad idea. Where can I go? Let's go over here. Oh. Okay, I wanted to talk to you guys about my health a little bit because you guys were asking, so what happened with the whole like, you having headaches and nausea and just feeling generally like shit literally every single day and finally going to doctors, getting an MRI, all these things, I posted my brain scans, like I was dick deep into actually trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. So. Since I've moved to Vegas, miraculously, I really haven't had the problem. And it's crazy because as soon as I moved to Vegas, I was like really busy. <laughs> I was stressed out because the first place we had was absolute horse shit. By the way, outfit of the day. It's like a little thing that I'm probably not supposed to wear as a, as a main outfit or whatever. I think the, the people who are cleaning my house are looking at me like, what the fuck, your ass is out. My literal ass is out. It's probably dirty right now. Sorry about that, but anyway, so I moved to Vegas. I kind of forgot about it. I wasn't thinking about it as much, mainly because I was so busy trying to move into the new place, trying to settle, trying to find a new everything. Like an, everything from a new grocery store to a new place to get my hair done. I had roots. I ended up not finding a new place to get my eyelashes done. Not that there's not a place, it's just, I'm trying to save money here. So, um, found all the new places, got settled, and then once I started streaming again and started like spending a fuck ton of time on the computer again, I realized, oh my god, I'm not having these problems anymore. And it was kind of like a godsend. <laughs> a godsend, says the atheist. At first I started thinking that it's probably something like, let's say the humidity is gone and the humidity, humidity was somehow fucking with me, but I highly doubt that. I feel like the only thing that changed was that I'm like happier. So I was thinking, okay, it's because I'm happier. Is there a way to do this where I'm not in agony? Let's try to find a place. Or we can just set you down there. Ah, oh, but then you can't see me. Did I zoom in? No? Can I stand up and, no? This is stupid too? Jesus, fuck! All right, what if we sit underneath here? Okay, this is good. This is actually kind of good. Okay. Uh, so I realized that the only difference was that I'm happier. I don't have the stress of my upstairs neighbors and I understated how fucking stressful it was that my upstairs neighbors were constantly partying, banging on the floor to the point that it was just like, what the fuck are you doing up there? It, I, I couldn't even imagine what they were doing up there. They're just like, bam, 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 bam. And then I had the cop, like the literal cops. I had them here, I had them there twice. I was talking daily to the guy at the office that I told you guys I wanted to fuck. I was going through him, um, just telling him like, holy shit, help, you know? And like, he couldn't really do anything and they were talking about putting them on a 30 day notice, then putting them on another 30 day notice. And I'm like, why do they need two 30 days notices? Just fucking kick them out. Like I have, oh, it was so fucking frustrating. And at the same time, I'm glad that just my word of mouth and a few videos that I showed them of like the banging and stuff. I'm, I'm kinda glad that that's not grounds for actually evicting someone, but at the same time, all I wanted was for them to be fucking evicted because they were making my life, my content, a living fucking hell. I was trying to sleep. I remember the pivot, most pivotal point, and I know I'm getting off topic here, but I just wanna talk to you guys. The most pivotal point in that issue was when was when I, I was sleeping bef the day before like a surgery. I think it was my second boob job. And I didn't get any sleep because they were being as l the loudest ever. They were being so loud and banging on the, the ceiling so like harshly that my door, my bedroom door that had to be closed because I don't remember why it had to be closed. 
I just kind of wanted it to be closed. I don't know. It's like a preference. It was like shaking like And I was like, oh my god So I called the security guy and I'm like literally I have to get up in like three hours for a surgery It's not good to put be in like this kind of mindset Can you guys please do something about it and make them shut the fuck up? And I was like really pissed this time because usually it's just like oh I have to you know make my content a little bit quieter So it doesn't pick up their noise or I have to deal with it during a stream Constantly I don't know if you guys remember but there were a few times during the stream where I had my headphones in, music on blast, I was playing League or something, and you could actually hear in the mic, and I could hear it through the headphones like a boom, just like, and the, the fucking, Jay calls it a chandelier, which I think is hilarious, but the, the ceiling fan with the lights on it would just like shake and like, and it like actually made one of the bulbs stop working. But anyway, that was like one of the biggest stresses of my life. I am pretty chill when it comes to drama and other people because I don't really give a shit what you do up there in your life if you're fucking donkeys up there as long as you're not hurting the donkeys you know cuz come on that infringes on their life liberty and pursuit of happiness but just basically do whatever the fuck you want do whatever makes you happy as long as it's not infringing in my rights and my ability to live my life and do my fucking job and this was so that was a huge huge amount of stress that I was just kind of repressing because the rest of my life was perfect and I was getting out of that apartment and I just didn't want to deal with it anymore and we finally got out we're down here we're settled now the scariest week of my life was over with the whole like not having a place to live for a bit I got the my dream house basically other than you know, it needs to be painted and shit It, it was just really amazing and I was thinking okay, there's no stress but then I decided after a while of not being on birth control of not taking my um, Yaz I take the generic brand of Yaz because the non-generic is pretty expensive but um, I started getting on my birth control again, and then the next three days I was streaming I did really long streams like five to six hour streams, which isn't that long But still it, it's enough to trigger my sickness back in Seattle uh, I did long streams and I was getting the sickness again. and I'm like, oh my god. No, does it really correlate with how long? I'm filming and working and editing and emailing like how long I'm actually sitting at a computer because that would really suck because one of my favorite things in the world is to sit there and fucking stream especially Dark Souls 3 right now so I was really sad but then I realized holy fuck the last three days I've been taking my fucking birth control so I just stopped taking birth control oh my god I'm so irresponsible but um, I'm just gonna stick to the pullout method for a while and every single day I think about it I literally I didn't realize the depth of how much it was bothering me the fact that I felt so ill every day And I I was actually considering going through the very very expensive Lyme disease tests and treatments and things just because I didn't know what the fuck was wrong with me And I feel great <laughs> It's so amazing because usually I'll, I'll do my videos I'll I'll either do a video and stop because I start feeling like shit after like three or four hours uh, one of the hours is obviously me showering, shaving, doing my makeup and hair and stuff like that. And then the rest is just me trying to make this video perfect, setting up the set, um, just filming the video, and then, you know, going back and forth, like, with the SD cards and putting it on my computer and prepping it for editing and stuff. And after that, sometimes I would feel too sick to do anything, so I wouldn't stream. And now I'm doing the editing and or... Uh, filming and streaming like almost every day and at the end of it I still want to do stuff like I'm still tired because it's like a kind of a long day and kind of takes a lot out of you to be in front of lights all day and stuff like that but other than my eyes sometimes still hurting which is still a problem which I think might be related to my rosacea I've heard that you can get rosacea of the eye but then again I have like really mild rosacea and now that I've uh, been taking care of my skin every time I went and got um, a facial my my facialist you know, not that kind of facial, but like the person who would cleanse my face and stuff, she would say, oh my god, you're so dry, oh my god, you're so dry. And uh, she's like, you need to drink enough water. And I'm like, you can't even fathom how much water I fucking drink. And when I explained that to her, she was like, that's so weird because I've been telling you these last two times that you really need to drink more water, right? And uh, you need to hydrate yourself and you need to use this, this and that fucking product to hydrate your skin. And I was like, well, I just moved from Seattle where it's humid to here and you know, it's kind of been hard on me. Like my pee is really yellow no matter how much uh, water I drink. That's a good indication that you're dehydrated. And she's like, oh, okay, you moved from that climate to this climate? Oh yeah, it's gonna take some getting used to. And I think now my skin has actually settled down to where instead of being like a really pink, like veiny, weird white person that looks like they have rosacea, I'm pretty much in the clear. I have like really nice skin now. And so, I don't know. The moral of this story is, 
you know, if you're on any prescription medication or, you know, I've had problems with birth control in the past. The Mirena, which is an IUD that they stick in you and it stays in for like three years and you can't get pregnant. It's like the most effective form aside from abstinence. Like that one, that's why I gained weight in 2015. Like, I don't know if you remember, but I was like 160 pounds in 2016. I was really unhealthy looking. I lost like 20 pounds and I'm still struggling to lose the rest. But when I was on Mirena, I, I ballooned up like fucking 40 pounds or something. And uh, I felt like shit. And uh, every time I had sex, it was the bad kind of painful, like literally just sharp knives. And Jay doesn't have any kind of pencil dick or anything, so I was like, why the fuck is this happening to me? And then I uh, just kind of had it with the Mirena, and instantly I, it, I was easy to get. It was easy for me to get into the gym and uh, get back to a more normal weight for my body and to stop feeling like shit. So it's kind of silly to me that I glossed over. And like, I kept telling you guys, like everyone's like, oh, it's your plastic surgery. It's, you know, everything stupid from like Botox to like, you know, just being a bitch. I don't know, like everyone had their own opinion. And I kept saying, no, guys, it, it precedes me even having sex. It pre it's been happening to me, like off and on, the severity has been off and on since I was like, 12 years old or something and then I connected it dude. I've been taking birth control since I was like 14 for uh, for acne and Because you know, I wanted to have sex with my boyfriend at the time and um, Yeah, I told my mom it was for skin clearing and hair and acne and it did help for skin clearing hair and acne and all that stuff but that was the missing link, the thing that's been constant throughout being a vegan, not a vegan, a vegetarian, not a vegetarian, thin, fat, like everything. The only constant has been that I've been on some form of birth control. So that I, every day I wake up and every day I get through the day, I feel amazing that at the end of the day, I'm not like, like I really need to go to bed. Oh god, I feel like shit. Oh, my head is pounding. Oh, I don't even want to eat. But the only thing that'll satiate me is like a piece of bread or something. And like, it was really bad. And I would like uh, be in the middle of a fun stream. And I would, t I don't know if you guys watch my stream, twitch.tv slash terrorbabcock. But occasionally I would be like, okay, guys, I gotta go. I'm starting to feel really sick. And that literally hasn't happened. And if it does happen, it's like a regular headache. You know, it's not like a the, the world is ending, I'm gonna die type of thing. So. I just wanted to let you guys know, um, I'm really glad that I'm at least having good days now because it was too expensive for me to try to, to diagnose this, which made me really sad because first of all, I have to pay at least $270 a month for my health insurance because I don't have a company um, and I make too much money to be on, you know, the welfare version of... <laughs> of healthcare, and I don't even want that to exist. I don't want taxpayers to pay for other people. I don't like that. Uh, that's my right-leaning self saying these things, but um, I'm not a fan of the state intervening and stuff like that, but I mean, if it's there, I'll use it probably. <laughs> but, so I make too much money and it's still expensive. And the only reason it's not like $300 a month for me is because I, um, under, I'm under 30 and I have a clean bill of health, like a clean history with no like, you know, illnesses or whatever. So I'm able to get a lower, a lower insurance, a lower premium, but I have like a 15, that, what is it? It's, it's like 8,000 or 15,000, I forget. It's like a lot <laughs> uh, deductible that I have to pay and specialist visits aren't covered, which sucks. So I didn't know this and I was told that, yeah, we take, they take your insurance, they take your insurance. And I guess I should have pro poked and prodded more into the policy. But uh, when I got my MRI, I had to pay that out of pocket and they tried to swindle me and they tried to double it up. Like I kept getting a bill that said, um, what was it? It was like, 300 bucks or something like that times two and the the code or whatever the thing that they were char charging me for was um, uh, It was MRI with contrast MRI with contrast and I called like three times and I'm like I got one One MRI with contrast and they were like, okay, we'll send it to the higher-ups You'll get a bill in a month if they you know agree They'll take half of it off if they don't agree. It'll still be the same bill. I'm like, okay, and then I got the bill once I moved here, um, I got the bill saying, okay, two times $300. And I'm like, and the first time I went through my insurance company, which was Regents back in Seattle, and uh, this time I called the people directly, the people who were billing me, um, the radiology people, and I'm like, no, one fucking 
like one, just one, okay? And it's so funny because she was giving me the runaround, like, well, you know, sometimes they fuck up and they have to do it again, and I'm like, first of all, if they fucked up and they had to do it again and I had to pay, they have to let me know. Second of all, if they fucked up and they have to do it again, they should be paying, because they fucked up. And she was like, okay, we'll run it through the higher up, so whatever, and I'm like, oh, I have no hope. So, so I wait about two weeks and I get a bill that says one times $300 and I'm like, yes. But this whole journey of me trying to figure out what the fuck was wrong with me, uh, going to the neurologist, going to a regular doctors uh, for things that aren't just my normal checkups, it actually run me, ran me like 1600 bucks or something. And if I just kept going down that list, I would have to go to my general practitioner again to get the referral and go to a bunch of different specialists, all of whom would find nothing wrong with me. But the one shining light, the one shining light in all of this is that one of my diagnostic tests that I was going to, the ear, nose, and throat guy to see if I had some equilibrium problems, on the way to that trip in Bellevue, Washington, I found Eve on the side of the road. So I am glad that I went through all of this because if I didn't have this fucking heinous head problem and nausea problem, I wouldn't have found Eve. And I was actually thinking about go not going to that appointment because I was like, they're not gonna find anything. The doctor said it was like a minute, whatever the fuck. And it was a really pointless appointment. Like I paid $300 for this appointment for him to say, oh, well, we can't get a hold of your doctor to get your, your MRI. And I'm like, okay. Waited in the office for about an hour. Then he comes to me and he says, oh, we just got your MRI, looks good, nothing wrong. $300. $300, suck my dick, fucking American issues, American health care vagina. You guys suck ass. I don't know the fix for it, but I know that it's broken. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you watched or I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I can't hope that you watch this video because nobody will. I guess it could be like a, a rhetorical comment. But yeah, I really appreciate you guys. I'm watching little hummingbirds drink out of all of my flowers and I'm very happy and I feel so much more healthy and I'm on the road to that perfect body again without feeling like it's taking away from the minuscule time I have to do my actual YouTube videos and stuff and I'm motivated again to do everything and I've actually been weight training and things have been great and I love it here so thanks for watching moral of the story is you know keep trying and you know health is is important but expensive I love you guys. Sorry this was long. It's been a while since I've done a Vlad vlog. Vlad vlog. This is Vlad uh, Mark II, by the way, also. So if the quality's gone up, that's why. Let me give you one more look at my pussy. No, <laughs> at my outfit. And my pool is super dirty because we had like a we had like a storm the other day. But I appreciate you guys watching this long-winded video, and I hope you guys are now caught up with what the fuck is going on. My hair is super frizzy. I love you guys. Bye!